What we're going to talk about now is a way to start to look at fixing dimensional errors and to compensate for some of those dimensional errors that we may see in our 3D prints. Um, overall, the outside dimensions that we will see are going to be pretty close. Um, the printers do really good at uh, printing the outside dimensions, but one thing that they kind of struggle with a little bit are the inside dimensions of holes or cutouts. They could be rectangles, they could be round holes. <clears throat> Any of those type shapes that are internal, um, they have a little more issue hitting those hole sizes. Um, and different people think about things different ways. Uh, the article that's in the presentation on dimensional errors is a good place to see some of the places that you can pick errors up. Um, and I would just like to show you guys a couple of ways to compensate errors out. Now, one of the ways that you can do it is to oversize your holes. So if we were making this part and we've got two holes in there and we would like to hit those hole sizes very accurately, we can oversize those holes. Now you may ask how much oversize you might ask. Well, it really depends on the printer itself. Uh, the printers that we have uh, are pretty consistent. Um, they make the holes small, and you will notice that's going to be the case on most 3D printers. Most slicer softwares are going to err on the size of making the hole a little bit too small because you can always drill a hole out. You can't add material back in without printing the part again. Um, so that's one reason that you will likely see holes being undersized. But that can be a problem if the hole is not just a round hole that you could drill out or something. So one of the ways that you can fix this is to oversize these holes in your model. Um, we have found that it's pretty consistent across the hole sizes that it's about 0.175 millimeters undersized. And it's pretty consistent. If it's a rectangular cutout, if it's a hole, it's pretty consistent. If it's an internal hole, that it is off by about 0.175. Now, sometimes you may not want to go in and edit your model. There's a couple of reasons you might not want to, but let's say for solution one, in my opinion, if you are 3D printing the part to be used as a 3D printed part, I would go in and actually edit these holes to be 0.175 millimeters larger than what I would like them to be. Now, if you don't want to do that, there are a couple of options, but they're not great solutions one of the things that we could do is we could go in and we could scale the model up. Now scaling the model up is a good solution if you're printing an ABS and the reason that your holes are undersized is because the part is shrinking. The part is going to shrink pretty consistently. So if you have a material that's shrinking, you can figure out what that shrinkage factor is it's usually going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 5 to 10 percent. And um, I'm sorry, half a percent to 1 percent. Um, you can figure out what that material shrinkage factor is, and then you can scale your model, and then your dimension should hit pretty close at that point. If that's not the reason, and with PLA, it's not going to be the reason. You're only really left with the two options of scaling your holes in your model, like actually going in and changing your model, or 
there is a compensation factor but I want to show you a drawback about using that. A lot of people want to use it and it's fine, but it comes with a caveat. The feature is called XY Compensation in Prusa Slicer. And if we go into Print Settings and go to Advanced, it will be down here. Um, may have to go up right here and go into Expert Mode. There it is. XY Size Compensation. Now, this will allow you to change the size of the object in the XY plane without changing the Z. So, basically, what we could do is we could go in here and edit the XY size compensation. Um, if we hover over this, you can see it'll be grown or shrunk in the XY plane, and negative equals inwards positive equals outwards. So let's put a large value in so that you can see it more readily. So if we look right here, I have aligned this bracket where the outside edges line up with these two lines. So if we go into print settings and advanced XY size compensation, let's do something like two millimeters. So that's a positive two millimeters. If I go back here, I'll have to re-slice it. And if you look at what happened, it added two millimeters to all sides. It added two millimeters up here. It added two millimeters down here. It added two millimeters to all sides of the circles. So you can see the holes are now way, way smaller. They're four millimeters underside because it added two millimeters to each size and the outside is four millimeters wider. Now normally you're not going to put such a huge XY size compensation on there but I like to show you with a big value what you're actually doing to your part. So if we wanted to open those holes up we would use a negative number. So we can do a negative two now just so that we can see that factor and how it works. Let's go back to the plater, re-slice. Now you can see that the part was up here and it shrank the outside, but the holes got way bigger. This is the problem with using the XY size compensation. It changes the outside shape as well as the holes. Now sometimes if it's a small amount, you may not care. If it's just a bracket or something like this part right here, honestly, probably wouldn't matter. But you need to remember a couple of things. If you're trying to make the holes bigger, it adds or subtracts material from both sides. So <clears throat> you're making a radial adjustment whenever you do that if you're trying to uh, adjust the size of the holes. So this adds two millimeters on the radius to the circle. It also shrinks the outside dimensions by the amount in the XY size compensation. If you don't care about the outside dimension getting a little bit smaller, such as the cases with this, uh, this little bracket here, it wouldn't hurt anything if it was a little undersize on the outside. Um, we could go in there and we could say negative 0.175, but actually I have to take half of that. So it would be, what is that, 80, 75, 0875. There we go. Enter that. Go back here and slice it. Now, that should open these holes up a little bit. It will shrink this outside down a little bit, but it opened the holes a little bit. If you could deal in the case of having a little bit less material here, but you get your hole size that you want, then that's one way of attacking that problem. But just be aware that if you do that, you're affecting all of the dimensions of your part on the outside and the inside. So inside and outside perimeters, it gets like that. The more complex your part, 
the more the XY size compensation really starts to mess with you. I'm not a fan of it. I don't like using it. And it's because most of the parts that I make are not super simple. They're not just a real straightforward shape like this. You know. But that's one way of actually doing it. So the three ways that we kind of talked about uh, changing that are you can change your model, you can scale it, or you can use the XY size compensation. I, I would shy away from using the XY size compensation and really rely on scaling for materials that might shrink a lot whenever they cool down like ABS. But for our class, that whittles it down because we're going to be using uh, PLA. So really the only avenue that I would suggest, unless you have a very simple part like this, is to actually change the value of the holes in your model.